Hello. On behalf of TAS International, I'd like to welcome you. This presentation is about airbag modeling and particularly about scaling and folding. Here you see two examples which probably already explain the difference between scaling and folding. The top two pictures are of a scaled airbag. It's a driver airbag, so you have a large pancake of about 60 to 65 centimeters in diameter and it is scaled. The reason for scaling is because it has to fit within the steering rim. For a passenger airbag, obviously it has to fit within the inflator house. A folded airbag is an example given in the two lowest picture. Again you have the reference mesh, but now you're going to fold it. The skilt is typically used for imposition load cases. It's pretty simple to make if you compare it to folding. Although there are a few things you have to take into account for skilled airbags as well. One of the major things you have to take into account is that you don't going to use projection method. Because if you're going to use projection methods, elements in the initial state can get a zero length. And that might give instability. For that reason it's preferred to use something like scaling. In this case it's the scaling in four directions. The share directory of Marimo contains a few examples of airbag modeling. It's in the application 3D direction. You see examples of folded and skilled airbags. One of the examples of the skilled airbag is a circular skilled one. Folding is more complicated. It already starts when creating your reference mesh, because you have to take into account where you would like to have your folds. Obvious it's much more accurate but also more time consuming because you have to define the contact and this is typically used for OOP load case or maybe side impact because there the time to deployment is very small if you compare it to a normal frontal case. I've said already in the previous presentation if you're going to use fabric shear in principle also ortholin, you have material direction dependencies. Those are typically used or they are defined with respect to reference geometry. Having said that, basically there is even a third option and that is an airbag without reference mesh. And that might be in an unfolded state a curtain. In those you don't have to define a reference mesh, although it might be might be convenient to do so for material directions for example and if you would like to fold it later on well there are two types of airbags generally speaking 2D and 3Ds the top one is an example of a 2D airbag it's a driver airbag and if you put it on the ground you can flatten it without any fold those are simple for scaling as well as folding also. 3D airbags are much more complicated because if you put it on the ground you're not able to flat it without having at least one fold. So those are very complex to fold. Of course we have a folder which is a tool to fold airbags but if you would like to take all foldings into account uh, that is complex. There are of course workarounds. One of them is the mold method. We are not going to discuss this one here, but you can find an example of that in the application manual. Another approach would be just to simulate all the folding, which is also possible. Let's go a little bit more into detail about the scaling and folding method. The reference mesh um, is the way the airbag looks if it is fully inflated. However, due to the folding, you introduce errors. For scaling, this is pretty obvious, as you can imagine that the area of the reference mesh is large with respect to the initial. Well, if you don't correct for the scaling, you will end up in a very small airbag. Well, the same thing is basically also occurring for folding. Well, the method 
to link the initial and the reference mesh together is called the initial metric method. There are two methods, two main methods available, method 1 and method 2. That will be addressed in one of the next slides. First, let's focus on how to set up such a reference mesh and initial method. You have two sets of coordinate tables, a coordinate and a coordinate underscore ref. As it might indicate already to you, the ref is used to store the neutral coordinates in the reference state. And that's what we call the stress-free state. The coordinates contained either the folded or the skilled coordinates. On top of that, you also have to define an element table. There are two of them. The first one is just the element. That is when you have the situation that all panels, for example in a tree airbag, are already connected together. If you would like to model separate panels in a flat state, you also have to define element underscore ref. Let's go to the pictures here. You see the flat bag, so the stress-free reference state. There are two parts on top of each other. It's just a small piece of the whole airbag. Well, if you're going to fold that, what you seen in the right state, the right figure, you're going to introduce errors. As you can see, some of the elements are shrunken, some of the elements are elongated. That's an error you have to correct for. And the same actually occurs for your skilled airbags, but then of course you don't have any folds. If you're going to apply fold, I recommend you to keep the, uh, the distance between the two folds, which is here called shortened element, as small as possible. Also prevent elongated elements. It's preferred to have stretched or a shortened elements only. In the folder program, there is an option where you can control this. Here you see a passenger airbag work out in more detail. In the middle you see the initial state, it's a skilled airbag. It contains coordinates and it contains ref element, oh, elements. Sorry. And it, the lowest picture you see the inflated state. Well let me go to the left column. That's the situation where you don't have flat panels. So the elements are connected to each other in the reference state already. The right picture, you see an example of element underscore ref. You have three separate panels, they are all flat. Obvious, that will introduce extra nodes. In this case, node 8 and 9. Manimo can handle this pretty well. The way it works is by the sequence of nodes in the element. So in initial state it knows that 8 and 9 has to be substituted by 4 and 3. Here you see the two main methods. I'm in method 1 and I'm in method 2. I'm in method 1 is typically used for folded airbags. As a user you define the moment and the time window in which the strain field due to the error you make due to the folding is applied. Due to that the airbag will get out of IMM. All elements will be out of IMM at the end of this time window. You can also use it for skilled airbags, but that's not commonly used. Control IMM method 2, we call it also the spring damper. It's a numerical trick. For MEN3 elements, as I said, MEN3 elements are the preferred elements to be used. Each side of such an element has a spring and a damper. If it is smaller than the reference length, this side will be an IMM. Once all three elements of such a triangular element are out of IMM, you will capture the reference length. And 
then the element will be out of Iron Man. For quadral elements, although not recommended to be used, also the diagonals are taken into account. The Iron Man 2 method has a special option by which you can enforce that at the end all elements are still being suppressed out of Iron Man. This Iron Man method 2 is used often for skilled airbags. On the internet website there is a guideline for airbag modeling where this is described in more detail. And of course you can also have a look on the examples provided on the share directory. That brings me to the end of this presentation. Goodbye.